Okay, this video is about the basics of server-side template injection. And if you already understand SSTI and you just want to cover the lab methodology, go ahead and check out the timestamps below and you should be able to jump to the section that you need. But let's go ahead and get started. So in order to understand SSTI, we need to talk about templates. So templates are essentially files that contain a bunch of static content. And within that static content, we have spots where dynamic content is supposed to go. And we denote where that dynamic content goes with specific templating syntax that's understood by the templating engine in use. So if we're talking about a Ruby application, it might be ERB syntax. Or if we're talking about a Python application, we, have, we might be using Jinja syntax. And within those characters that denote templating syntax, you'll see a reference to something like a model or an object and its attributes. So if we call user.username, the templating engine will see that and it'll dynamically put the user's username there. Or if we put voting location dot description, then we'll see that the description gets populated there. Now, real quick, it's important to note for SSTI that the root of the issue is that our payload is somehow rendered by the templating engine somehow. And it could be through modifying the templating file directly or our parameter just happens to be sent and rendered by the templating engine that way. But keep a pin in that for now. Just note that that's pretty much the root cause of this issue. But let's go ahead and talk about a few more examples of templating to really drive the understanding home. So let's say you have an application that allows users to host their own events. Well, what you could do is you could have a user fill out data about their event and a template will actually populate this data that's specific to the event that the user creates. So an application developer might create a template for events. And then from there, that user controlled data for each event will be populated in the template when a user goes to view that specific event. Another example are emails. Email templates are really common, especially in modern frameworks, where you create a static email template and then allocate specific parts that are dynamic. So like the user's username or a specific link that the user will click. So that's a couple examples of templates. Okay, what about server-side template injection? What are we talking about that? Well, let's look at a simple example of a template. Here you can see an event with an event name. And that event name is being passed dynamically as data. In this case, it looks like some proper usage. But what happens when user input is directly concatenated to the template? And, and at that point, it becomes part of the template directive. And the template engine actually looks at that and does something with it or processes it based off of what the user injects. That's when we have an issue. So first things first, anywhere we look and we see user controlled input that's being reflected, we want to see if when we inject that input, does the templating directive look at it as data or does it actually interpret it and return the contents of what we try to evaluate. This is where the power and the impact of SSTI really comes into play. Because if we can confirm that the templating engine evaluates simple arithmetic like seven times seven, now we could try something like system who am I and possibly get RCE. And even if we can't get RCE, we can use the power of the templating engine to interact with functionality we shouldn't be able to interact with and possibly exfiltrate some sensitive data. So what's the methodology to actually discover SSTI? Well, we're going to use this lab to actually go through a common methodology or a common workflow that we'd use to discover SSTI in the wild. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, discovery and exploitation of SSTI is a three-step process. Step one is finding reflection of our user-controlled input. We need a reflection of input. That way we know when our payload is processed by the templating engine, do we actually see that it's evaluated or is it returned as such without evaluation? Step two is enumerating the templating engine in use. So we have a list of payloads that if they get evaluated by a templating engine would return seven times seven, which is 49. And we'll break this down a little bit, but essentially we have a list of payloads. We throw it at the application where the user inputs reflected. And if it returns 49, then we can narrow it down based off templating syntax. And then step three is exploitation. Sometimes you'll get flat out RCE just from publicly available payloads. And we'll go through some resources where you could find those payloads. But if there's not a payload out of the box that just works, you'll probably have to get your hands dirty. You'll need to enumerate what you have access to within that template execution environment. You either have to do this by going through documentation or exploring objects like self and its available methods or different functions that you have at your disposal. Error messages do make this easier, but if all you get is output of properly evaluated uh, templating syntax, then you need to get crafty. That's outside the scope of this video, but just know that any published payloads you find all come from awesome researchers who did the hard work of putting together these gadget chains. So if you find something in the wild, your research could really help the community. So as we look at this lab, we see the applications a pretty basic shop application and we can view details of an item. And then when we click view details, let's see what happens here. It attempts to open up a product and here we get a message. Unfortunately, this product is out of stock. 
So if we take this request to repeater with control R, what we can do is we can look at where this message is being reflected, uh, which is down here. So we can actually send this instead to intruder and grab a list of payloads, which we're going to inject in this message URL parameter. So I like using hack tricks for something like this. This hack tricks has a really great breakdown of SSTI in general. And it starts with this direct plain text context, which has a list of different payloads. And if the, if the payload or if our input's being sent to a templating engine and actually being evaluated, it should return 49 where it's being reflected. So we add this to clipboard. We go back to burp, go to payloads, paste our payloads here. And we want to use grep extract. So we go to options and go to grep extract. And we want to extract the data that is being reflected. So what was that message that we got? Unfortunate, I think. Yeah, unfortunately, this product is out of stock. So if we highlight this within the div here and click OK, when we run this intruder attack, it should actually return the contents of anything within that div. So as you can see here, our output is being reflected, or, or, or excuse me, our payload is actually being evaluated and returning 49. And this specific syntax is actually Ruby or ERB templating specifically. And the awesome part about this is you can jump to hack tricks, control F and look for Ruby and it'll actually show some example payloads you can use. So this first line shows that we can just run the system function directly. Let's go ahead and give this a try. We'll minimize our intruder attack, go back to repeater. And then what we'll do is we'll actually highlight a section of the response that will be easy to jump to. We'll paste it in this search box. And if we click this gear and go auto scroll to match when text changes, every time we send this request, it'll hop right to where our input is being reflected. So instead of this message, what we can do is less than percent equals, then we need a space, which URL encoded can be percent 20 or plus. System, who am I? Plus, and then percent greater than. And when we run this, you could see that we're the actual user Carlos. From here, we can do an LS to list the contents of the directory. In this case, we have morale.txt. We can do PWD to see what directory we're currently in. Present working directory is home Carlos. So the lab calls for us to actually remove a specific file from the file system. So we could do rm plus, which is a space, home carlos morale.txt. And we could have just removed morale.txt because we're in that directory. But you can see, if we go back to the actual application, we got the congrats we saw of the lab. And so from here, what we did was, again, three steps. We looked for user controlled input or reflection of user controlled input. We went ahead and tried to enumerate whether or not our input was being sent to a templating engine. And if it was, we would get evaluation of our payload. So if we look at our intruder attack again, we're trying to return seven times seven, which is 49. And in this case, because we got 49 returned, we enumerated that the templating engine in use was Ruby's ERB templating engine. And we confirmed we have SSTI because we got this 49. So from here, it's just exploitation. And we leverage hack tricks to see that we can just call system directly and get RCE. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.